So, um, you know, Dr. Hawkins is one of my teachers, and I do the... Um, one of the things that I got from him was the cancelling of beliefs exercise. So lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles is God did not create it, so it's not real. And, and it states in the lesson 14 that you can say, like, God did not create cancer, so it's not real. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a preamble. And I, and, uh, or Dr. Hawkins' version, I cancel my belief in cancer. I'm an infinite being, subject only to what I hold in mind. So subject only to what I hold in mind. So anything, that ho anything that's held in the limited ego will come to bear, will come to manifest. So all the limited crap that I hold in my, all the programs, all the limited data that's held into, will, be, will come at some point into my experience. You could say to, it will come, the, my limited program will come into mind at a certain point to make a choice on it either to uh, transcend it, let it go, or either to, to hold on to it and potentially have that thing happen over and over again until that pattern is resolved. So, the great thing with uh, doing, you know, being a Hawking student, he also talks about um, past lives as well. And also the belief systems held in mind tend to manifest. So whatever, I, whatever programs I hold in mind tend to come and, and bite me on the bum, if that makes sense. So the thing with uh, parking tickets and um, just a lot of trouble with cars repeatedly coming over uh, and karmic payback, yes. So for me, certain belief systems are just picked up from the collective sometimes, but they tend to... You could say that nothing happens by accident, even if you pick up random things from the collective, that you are in that particular environment where those belief systems are being sort of, uh, sort of shouted out, or, those are, or you're born in a particular country where certain collective belief systems tend to operate, uh, that you're born into a particular family, where which your parents which tend to have certain belief systems, or you become interested in certain fields and certain topics. You know, a lot of this, um, with Hawkins' muscle testing, kinesiologic research, I mean, an advanced spiritual student will tend to have had 15 or 20 lifetimes. So that's a lot of karmic baggage. And, uh, and in past lifetimes, often, uh, you know, they could have been quite crude. You know, one could have been a thief or, or an unsavory character. So sometimes very unsavory things can happen in this lifetime. When you start to get to more advanced levels of spiritual work, sometimes people get automatic flashbacks to their past lifetimes. So they start to, because, you know, the ego is the source of separation. When I identify with my personal story, I, I you know, the, the Course in Miracles says, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. The Course says, all my thoughts are meaningless. So if you weren't, so basically, if you weren't identified with your body as being what you are, you would return to that infinite space beyond the body. If, you were, if every single thought in your consciousness was meaningless, you wouldn't register them. You'd be thoughtless. You can only, you can only register in individual consciousness that which is limited. You know? So the limited consciousness uh, experiences limitation. Yeah. How does limitation... You, well, one way you could say limitation is experience. You know, I'll use the course language, is meaning. If the ego ascribes meaning to something, like a belief, or an object, or a parking ticket, or a traffic warden, or whatever it is, then it has special significance to the ego. Uh, to the extent that uh, an object, or a limited type of form, or a belief system has sp um, special meaning, then it registers. Something that's very... Now, I come from a, an addiction background. I think the great thing about addiction is it's, it's very extreme. Addicts will literally find, uh, I'll put it in like a, my primary addiction was uh, food, like donuts is one of my things, but it could equally be donuts, drugs, alcohol, could be people, you know, there are all kinds of different addictions out there. Um, so, so, if, so a donut to me would have been extremely meaningful, and therefore if there was a donut in the room, then I would register that. Like, you know, I would pick up a donut. Even if a donut was hidden under the table, I'd probably know it was there. 
because I was just my, my whole ego is just looking out for donuts or sugar or, or cakes or whatever it is and I'll eat them and there's this thing of wanting a craving or a desire for those donuts as if they're the source of life uh, you know to to fulfill some kind of emptiness within so that you know like if like I'll tell you something that's meaningless like I could be in a room and uh, I don't know like uh, what's pretty boring to me you know, it won't sound good with I candles are pretty boring to me you know candles are pretty boring. like if I went into a room and someone was a candle collector I probably wouldn't notice there was hardly any candles I wouldn't have what color candles they are if there were any candles I just wouldn't register them this is totally meaningless what's totally meaningless? you know this from your own experience if you just check in things when you walk down the street when you go into a supermarket when you go down a shopping mall, things which are meaningless you won't remember at the end of the day after you walk past them you don't know you went past them. They're so meaningless, you don't track it. You won't even remember it happened. You know, like, uh, like if you're a handbag addict, you know, you'd notice every handbag you went through on the street. But if you weren't, if, you, if it was like um, something else, you wouldn't notice it. So meaningless things don't register, and meaningful things register very strongly in consciousness. And often, if you're like very spiritually disconnected in separation, shall we say, strong states of separation, certain things have extreme meaning and you, you feel that without those things then you'd be disconnected from life. Some people are like relationship addicts, like, um, like I go to places where there's lots of addictions, so a relationship addict, like if they lose their person they project specialness onto, they'll think that there's no point in living, they'll think of committing suicide because that person's lost, you know. Their favorite person got run over by a car, so they'll become suicidal as if the source of life is lost. No point in living. Or, you know, or, um, you know, for, for me, if you cut me off from my sugar supply while I was an addict, you know, I would go into extreme agony. Uh, so that's the type of thing of anything that's special. The more you go into, I'm trying to talk, I'm waffling on a bit or ram rambling there. Okay, so parking tickets then would be. Um, so levels, you know, Hawkins has done this. So the more I go into separation and things have special meaning, and special meaning can be through belief systems, um, and, and also things that hit me tend to be karmic in origin. What, you know, so the way that happens, I mean, the Course talks about guilt, you know, and guilt and oneness. So if you're in separation, mm, so parking tickets for me would be a thing of like, if I think the universe is being unfair to me, then usually that's a, a form of guilt that's being held in, you know. So why would something in the universe, why would I feel things are being unfair? Like if suddenly like everywhere I go, I get a traffic ticket, that would seem unfair to me. Like why are the tra traffic wardens picking on me all the time? Um, but then I'd probably suspect uh, past life or this lifetime stuff of... Um, so whenever I do anything, because in truth there's, there's only one of us, but in the illusion of separation there is the perception of two or many of us. So in the illusion of two or many of us, when, beha when behaviours out of separation create harm to someone else in separation, then within the illusion forms guilt. And guilt requires, the energy of guilt requires punishment. So, like if I was, uh, let's say, uh, in a past lifetime, I was, uh, you know, I was um, in Nottingham Forest and I was just giving, put it, giving sort of tickets to all the carriages going past and, and being quite unfair in the taxes I was trying to raise. It could be that in this lifetime with my cars, you know, it could feel quite unfair. Or, but when I'm in these states of guilt and separation and perceiving unfairness, then obviously there's an, there's an aspect of guilt and there's an aspect of how I feel I'm being unfair. And that would be the belief systems and the karma. So I just try to clear, like whatever comes up, you know, clear it. Like, how do I perceive, you know, are, if, if I'm getting traffic tickets and unmanageability, then what are the belief systems I'm holding that I need to cancel? Has someone, is someone seemingly victimizing me unfairly? And it's very, very easy. I mean, uh, Hawkins talked about the anti-karma prayer. 
which is to pray for forgiveness for the one in me who did that to others in this lifetime and past lifetimes, which is a very, very powerful prayer for deleting uh, the belief system and the sense of guilt within the individual consciousness. Like if I feel I'm always getting parking tickets, uh, then I would I would can pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been who's unfairly ticketed. I mean, things are symbolic. You know, I might it might not have been a car. You know, I might have been a traffic warning, but I might have done something symbolically similar, like you know, like it could be with carriages or it could be. Vehicles, I mean, vehicles could even be ships and boats, you know, it could have been the, 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 the boat, the boat, um, the man allowing the boats in to, to bay, you know, and, and, and charging them unfair taxes or whatever it is, uh, having a selfish interest. So I just pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's unfairly ticketed people in this lifetime past. I, also, whatever comes up is data and however it comes up, you know, what is the belief system that's coming up? Like, you know, I might believe that I'm being victimized by traffic wardens. So, you know, I cancel my belief I'm being victimized. Or God did not, you know, one other thing I do is I try and delete whatever is coming up in consciousness so it doesn't exist. It's not real. If you do the belief, you know, if you do like uh, Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, God did not create unfair traffic wardens, so they're not real. God did not create dishonest car buyers, so they're not real. God did not create, uh, you know, the councils out to get me, so then it is not real. Now, whenever you do this, or I cancel my belief in it, I'm an infinite being, what you're doing is you're deleting the data. Each time you do that, you dissolve it into the infinite. So, basically, you've got a finite belief, you've got a limited belief, and you're cancelling it. It's not real, or you're an infinite being, you delete it into the infinite. Does that make sense? You're deleting the limited into the infinite. If you keep deleting the finite into the infinite, eventually it dissolves. When you no longer hold finite data, i.e. a belief system in consciousness, then this outward manifestation dissolves, because there's nothing to hold it. Even, and even if it did happen, you wouldn't notice it, you see. But also, when you don't notice it, your vibration goes up. Generally, when you don't hold negativity in you, those things, you don't register them, they don't affect you, and anyway, your vibration is that which protects you. So those infinite vibrations, those states of flow, wouldn't be a problem anyway. So you've got to let go of the limited data. How is that limited data? It's a limited belief and guilt. If, there is, um, if there's a feeling, you know, so you can cancel the belief, or, or God did not create, it's not real. What are the belief systems? Do the anti-karma prayer. Just see that the people who are victimizing you've had the opposite role and just pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's done the same thing to others in this lifetime and past lifetimes i had the thing where i used to work in the stock market i wasn't let's say i wasn't very honest and then uh, I, I used a very um, pressurized selling techniques and uh, and you know i i uh, I put my name on a to get some information about some stocks, and they sell my name to basically every single brokerage company. So I'd have these very aggressive salespeople calling me up for a long time, and obviously I knew that was karma, you know. So I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been an aggressive salesman, who you couldn't get you couldn't get me off the phone because I had I was trained with a hundred comebacks and wouldn't let you off the phone. It'd be very uh, annoying. Uh, so and it, can, it comes back. So I just pray for forgiveness for the one in me who did that to others and now I get the same thing. So it dissolves the guilt. It dissolves, you know, the payback. And then, it, and then thank you. And so it dissolves. So the unmanageability occurs because I'm holding belief systems and I'm holding guilt. You know, guilt can be fear or shame or anger. So you just uh, dissolve it. Other things to do, which you could do is just be in high vibration spiritual groups that will help you dissolve the thing. Do group exercises to clear it. Um, you can apply the Course in Miracles, but you know, place all traffic wardens of God's infinite light and love and pray for miracles and <coughs> transcendence. Play for dishonest car, place dis all dishonest car sellers into God's infinite light and love and pray for miracles and transcendence or any other words, a pray for a miracle to see traffic wardens and dishonest uh, sellers differently. Instead of tra uh, traffic wardens, I could see peace. But all these exercises for me is just to dissolve until I don't, it no longer exists for me. 
always I've experienced when, when something doesn't exist for me in consciousness, it disappears from the material world. That's been my experience so far, or I don't notice it any longer. So it doesn't bug, bug me and it disappears. So that's what I would, um, yeah, I do believe there is, the payback can only, I can only, like uh, Buddha said, uh, you know, um, until I'm enlightened, I, I will suffer old age, aging and death or something along those lines, but suffering. And unless I reach enlightenment, I will always suffer in this world. It's not very cheery, is it? Because while I'm holding limited, while I'm limited, I'm holding limited data, the nature of limitation is to suffer. So the only way I can get past that, the suffering of limitation, is to experience my infinite nature, my infinite beingness, or that aspect of myself which is undying, which cannot change, and which is not affected by limited, because it's free from limitation. But it, as soon as I'm, anything that I hold in mind which is limited has the power to affect me with limitation. That is the nature of holding something limited in mind. 